Hello again, sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT, here from Weather Risk in Central Virginia. You're a captain of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about this week in weather for this May 29th, going into May 30th. Well, the month is pretty much over with, as uh, and it's been a very wet month. First, I want to remind you, of course, this here is the uh, Weather Risk Grains Twitter page for my grain clients. And this here is the uh, Blue Sky page for the operational forecast. And this is the Mid-Atlantic forecast, which you can get for $35 a month. Breaks down the Mid-Atlantic region, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, West Virginia, Mid-Atlantic in the 12 zones. Maps, week two forecast, all sorts of detail. Only $35 a month. You can get it up here in the shop page. Right up here where it says shop. You can get it up that way, I think. Uh, it should be right there. Yeah. Right about here, you can get it. Yep. So... And of course, you have other, other grain um, products as well. Now, the one thing I did want to talk about with Starkly off is the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean. Again, you can see the Eastern Atlantic is, actually, is below normal, considerably below normal. A lot of this is dust and reduced sunlight here. But also, we've had consistent high pressure in Great Britain and over Northeast Atlantic. And what that's doing is it's driving north winds down, which is causing upwelling. On the other hand, the western Atlantic the Gulf of Mexico is actually quite wet, quite warmer than normal, I should say, as you can see. And that is of some concern, so we'll see if that plays out. In fact, the operational GFS, the last three runs, is trying to develop a tropical storm or hurricane in the Caribbean that hits Florida uh, by the middle of June. I'm not certain about that, but um, usually it's GFS fantasy stuff, so we'll talk, we'll talk about that in just a minute. All right. The, here's, the rainfall for almost a month is over May, through May 29th. But you can see what was going on here. This black line shows the edge of the moderate rain. This is the Midwest. And, you know, in the, May, the month of May, places of Iowa, Illinois, getting two, three, four inches of rain. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, it's somewhat below normal, as you can see, the rainfall anomalies by about an inch or two. But it's not horribly dry. But here, the black line area shows you where the main range was falling. And then in this, in the, within the black line area, this is like three to six inch rains. And then the yellow line is where you get the light, tan, white, bluish gray purple color uh the rainfall amounts here are anywhere from six as much as uh, 15 to 18 inches and that of course is well above normal and uh, that's my concern is um that if we keep this pattern going up into june or july and we do get a hurricane on the, east, the gulf of mexico it's going to cause some serious flooding problems let me show you this is the seven day rainfall for the eastern u.s ending as of this thursday morning and again look where the big rains are the lower plains in the deep south now, just like, the, just like the trend we saw here, where you had moderate rains in the mid-Atlantic into New England, again, in the last seven days, moderate rains in North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, East and New England. Same sort of thing. And then dry here in the upper Midwest, and that sure enough has been the trend for the past 30 days. Now, one of the reasons why you've been stuck in this pattern here is the upper air map. So this is the upper air map from May 15 and May 19. So we had the big trough coming in here on May 15th. This upper low brought actually a little bit of snow to the Dakotas, mostly rain for the Midwest here. And the trough was hanging back this way. We had a ridge over the deep south. That gave away strong blocking developed in Greenland. So this trough now moved to New England. Here come the next one dropping down as another one behind it. So a very active pattern. As you can see trough, 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 boom, 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 going underneath the blocking here. And then we, this is May 20th here in the upper left. Another massive trough blasts into the Rockies and into the upper Midwest, pushes up against the ridge, and you get more rain in the Midwest, the lower Midwest, the lower plains, the deep south. Meanwhile, look at the monster block we've had in Greenland and Canada. And that continued. Now, as we went to May 26th, the block began to move westward. You can see it here. Okay. No block on May 15th. Blocking showing up on May 19th. Blocking gets very strong on May 20th, and then it continues to retrograde and move west backwards. And there is the block centered now, no longer in Greenland or Labrador, but in central and north central Canada. And what that does is, what that's been doing is that is allowing uh, all this energy coming in from the Pacific to pass underneath the blocking. And that's been producing the wet pattern here for the deep south in particular and the lower plains, but even some areas of moderate rain for the Midwest and the Plain states. So that's generally what the pattern has been. In fact, here is the upper air map from uh, April 28th, just yesterday morning. And you can see there's the block again, stretching from British Columbia and Idaho and Washington 
across the Canadian prairies into Quebec, Canada, and a big upper low in the upper Midwest with a trough running southeast towards Louisiana and Mississippi, and several disturbances, a low-pressure low area here, another one here, coming in on that strong Pacific jet. All this energy is going underneath the block, underneath the block, and that's producing the wet pattern for the southern states. This is the wet pattern here. These are temperatures. Now, this is a little deceptive. This is the first two weeks, okay, the 15-day temperature anomalies through May 15th. And you can see it's a little, obviously, where it's raining, we had temperatures a little below normal, slightly below normal in the deep south and through the Tennessee Valley, the Delta region. But in the mid-Atlantic, New England, it was a, a couple of degrees above normal. Very nice first half of May. But in the last 14 days, you can see the temperatures have been much, much colder from Iowa all the way to Pennsylvania into Virginia and southern Missouri. So, the, yes, it definitely has been much colder than normal because of the cloud cover and because of the rain and because of the coastal storms and the north winds. So we've been stuck in this pattern. Now, this is the latest mid, I uh, should say, Thursday evening weather map. And there's the radar. You can see the rain coming up for tonight into east and north, uh, east North Carolina, eastern Virginia, southeast Virginia, Delmarva, southern New Jersey. Then there's another batch here. So the high pressure area, which brought the great weekend to the upper Midwest, the Plain States, that's breaking down. We have this front. You see, it's like low pressure here, low pressure here, low pressure here, waves of low pressure along the stalled front. And a couple days ago, this front was way down on the Gulf Coast, but it's lifting north as the high pressure area in the Midwest begins to break down. And that's driving the rain further north. Now, by the time we get to May 31, what's going to happen is you see this trough here. This trough is going to uh, shift eastward, and, and then the western side of it's going to drop southward. So we end up getting a north. See, how this is shaped essentially west to east right now. This upper low is going to be shaped south to north. Let me show you what I mean. This is now on May 31, and you can see the trough is running north to south. Let me blow this up so you can see it a little more. There it is, big ridge in the Rockies, the west coast, a block in north central Canada. There's a big giant trough right here with an upper low in uh, James Bay, Canada. So this is obviously, now this whole pattern is pulling down cold air, well, cool air. Okay, look at the lines coming straight out of northern Canada. Look at this stuff. Right out of northern Canada, all cool air. And this is a dry pattern also for the Midwest and the upper plains. Uh, as long as this ridge is in place, it's a dry, cool pattern for everybody. And this is reflective. Now, here is the rain, okay, because when this system begins to rotate and shift north to south as it approaches the east coast, it will cause rain to develop, a new area of low pressure developing here on Friday morning, bringing the moderate rain into western half of Virginia, West Virginia, southeast Ohio, Kentucky, the western Carolinas, and Georgia. Then the rain moves into northern Virginia, central Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York City, southern, southern New England. Uh, and the high pressure comes in behind it. That's Friday evening into the early Saturday morning. Now, by the time we get to Sunday, the big low is now off the East Coast, up in New England and Southeast Canada. You can see the trough right here. And this whole thing is going out to sea. But, um, and of course, high pressure coming behind it. Nice, beautiful high pressure system, dry conditions, uh, seasonal temperatures, seasonally cool, no real threat at all. There's the upper air map. It's leaving now. Here comes the next system. First, we have this trough in Western Canada, another one in the Gulf of Alaska that see is dropping down, gonna drop down, and you have these two upper air disturbances, one off the California coast, one in Arizona. So these three features are gonna merge into a big trough here early next week on the Rockies and the Plain States. Let me show you what I mean. Here comes the big trough, you see it? There you go. Now, the ridge remains very strong on the East Coast, so this is a slow moving cold front. So this surface map here is valid June 3rd and uh, June 4th. So you can see the fronts moved very little in this whole time. Meanwhile, the high pressures off the coast, you're getting southwest winds, warmer, a little more humid conditions, uh, not extremely humid, but a little more. And again, a lot of rain along um, the central and upper plains and the upper Mississippi Valley, but nothing in the Ohio Valley, nothing in the Tennessee Valley or Southeast. This is through June 4 and probably through June 5. Temperatures, okay, here are the readings for June 4. All the 80s are back along the Mississippi River and the Gulf Coast. These are 70s and 60s in New England. But by the time we get to, let's say, uh, June 4, we can see that 80s are up into New England and Ohio, all around the, Virginia, upper 80s here. And then this is your front pu pushing through slowly 
by Joe, June 4. In terms of the rainfall for the next seven days, now this is from Sunday. I'm not including the rain coming in here uh, tonight, tomorrow, or Friday, Saturday. I'm not including that. This is from Sunday through uh, June 6th, next week, almost a full week. And you can see that Virginia is mostly dry. Most of New England, Pennsylvania, Ohio is dry. The, the southern states is mostly dry. Not completely, but for the most part dry. Of course, this rain is associated with the next front. Okay. Now, as we go beyond this, and we go into uh, week two, um, oops, sorry, this is wrong. This should say June 5 on it. Sorry about that, June 5. Um, you can see this, um, uh, the new trough is pushing in from the Rockies. Again, another energy coming down. The upper low, which was up in the Aleutian Islands, is now in British Columbia and the Alaskan Panhandle. And uh, you have this new trough coming in here, and that drives the cold front steadily eastward so it stalls again in the Tennessee Valley, the Mid-Atlantic and New England region. So the week two forecast looks pretty wet uh, once you get into June 5, 6 or 7. But again, this is a pretty strong ridge here. So there's a lot of warm air ahead of this front and maybe humid air as well. Uh, the, this, if this ridge is right, um, it's going to uh, prevent the humidity from surging too far north. Um, especially and the ridge also to the north here in New England is going to slow this front down. This front may be coming in even slower than what the models are showing. This again, so if you look at the model data, it has the front reaching the east coast late on June 5, morning of June 6. This may be too aggressive. It may be more like June 6 or June 7. Just want to let you know about that. Okay. Then again, I didn't change the date here. Sorry about that. Uh, my bad. This is again, this is June 6. My bad. You can see what happens. Um, now we get into a normal pattern. None of this convoluted stuff. You see, now we're getting into a more normal weather pattern here. Um, and uh, the, for, um, oh, I didn't change the date on that one either. I don't know why I didn't change the date on these. Um, so this is June 6th, and then you can see the ridge is still in place across the eastern United States. Now, this is not a super powerful ridge. It's a moderately strong ridge, and it's pretty extensive. But more importantly, what I want to bring forward here, let me bring this front, you can see it. You see these little disturbances in the heights? Uh, bring, here we go. Uh, here we go. You see little X's I drew in here? These are little Vortmaxes, little disturbances in the jet stream. So it's going to move across the central plains into the Midwest, and you're going to, these are going to be generate thunderstorm clusters in this kind of weather pattern. And uh, they could be pretty significant clusters of thunderstorms here as we go into the like, full, let's say, once we go past June 6th into June 8th or 10th or 12th. And you can see, see the front right here? Pretty active, a lot of storms along the front here. The, the, the previous front is off the coast. It's warm, high pressure dominating most of the eastern U.S. by June 6th, by June 7th, by June 8th, a lot of readings, mid to upper 80s, some 90s. Now this, again, let me change the date here. This is 11 June. Oops. And you can see what's going on. Uh, the trough gets very strong in the Midwest, um, and it drives the cold front to the East Coast, reaching the East Coast again. So it really doesn't move much at all, as you can see. And um, you got these disturbances along the front, the upper air disturbances, generating low pressure on the front. So this is, you know, the week two has the potential of being a fairly wet pattern. Uh, uh, for the East Coast and the Deep South. Not so much for the Midwest or the Plains states. Now, the other thing, one, uh, this is my last slide here for the overall pattern. This is June 13th, and you can see uh, we have the mean trough now over the Mississippi Valley, a ridge in the, off the East Coast, a ridge in the Pacific Northwest. So this could be a pathway for any tropical systems to come north into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is what the GFS was showing earlier. This here is the um, 6C GFS. You see the system on June uh, 8th hitting southern Florida um, and you can see it again moving slowly northward. Um, this was again this is uh, moving up the coast and then you can see a 12Z it's got the same sort of solution Florida somewhere in Georgia or South Carolina. This is probably bullshit but you can rule it out. The Gulf of the Southwest Atlantic is very very warm uh, much warmer than the Eastern Atlantic and this is the GFS ensemble um, and you can see here that it has a lot of areas which are showing some kind of low pressure in this area. Not necessarily a tropical storm or a hurricane, but something there. Okay, that's the GFS. And then that was the 12Z one. The 18 one of the GFS is much stronger. You can see really getting 
a nice cluster here forming, and that looks more impressive, I have to tell you. Uh, and finally, this is the European, Val, the same time frame. The European has some hint of low pressure. See the red numbers here? But it's not a really big cluster. So I'm not convinced yet the GFS is on anything there. It may be seeing some kind of system. I don't know if it's going to be as strong as what the GFS is showing. I really kind of doubt that. But again, this is where the water temperatures are the warmest in, Atlanta, in the Atlantic Basin. The Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas, Southwest Atlantic Ocean. So... It's something to watch, but right now I don't have a lot of faith in the GFS model because none of the other models are really showing this. So let's see what how it plays out over the next couple of days. This is meteorologist at DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Weather Risk Grains Twitter page, over on the Facebook page, and on the Blue Sky page.